In this week's episode, I'll show you this. It's an electronic dice. I'll show you how I put together the kit, then designed and 3D printed a case for it, and put it all together on this week's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. For this project, I started with the Shaking Dice Kit. It's kit MK150 from the company Velleman. They sent me this to do a review. So let's put this together. It says difficulty level is easy, so let's see. So I pulled the back of it off and exposed the parts here. I've got a circuit board. I've got a bag of various parts. I've got some resistors. And I've got a battery clip. So when I open the cardboard cover there's the instructions along with some special sheet here so it looks pretty good it's got step-by-step -step instructions it's even got a schematic which is nice now it looks like they made a change to the vibration switch at step five so this is an insert to change that so I guess they didn't want to reprint the cards so we'll address that later uh, I got out my vise my 3d printed vise to hold the circuit board and I adjusted it to hold this board Everything looked good, so I moved on to step one, and it says install the resistors. Now there's several, R1 through R7 here are these 560 ohm resistors, and then there's a 1 mega ohm resistor. So I put the 1 mega ohm in first, and then I went about bending the 560s with the 3D printed bender tool that I reviewed in a previous film of Friday. I actually 3D printed that tool in a previous film of Friday. So I got all the resistors in place, put it in the vise, and then got out my soldering iron and began to solder the leads to the board. And these are bare copper pads. Now, I like to see tinned pads, so it flows a lot better. It's easier to solder. But these soldered pretty well, and I think it's because this is a single-sided board. So you have to be careful with a single-sided board not to get it too hot because the pads will lift off. But it does make it easier to solder because they heat up quicker. So once I got them all soldered I used my clippers to clip them all flush and then once that was done I did I did a visual inspection and everything looked good so then it was time to move on to the next step and install the capacitor C1 and this has no polarity it can go in either way so I put that in place bent the leads and then the socket you have to make sure you get the notch lined up with the marking of the notch on the circuit board that makes sure that everything is in line and pin one goes in the right place. So I put that in place and I just kind of used my thumb to bend the leads over just so it would hold it itself while it was upside down. And then I had to fix that. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute. So I soldered the uh, capacitor first. Then I just soldered pin one. And see how it's lifted? It's because gravity's pulling this thing down. So what I do is I just push it down while I heat that pin one. Now it's flush. That's just a quick tip on how to make sure it's soldered good and from there that pin one holds it in place and I can solder the remaining pins. So this was looking good and it's pretty easy to build so far. The next step was install the battery holder and this just had two leads that went into holes at designated locations. So I put that in place and this thing wanted to fall out actually so I had to bend the leads a little bit and then just two quick solder joints and that guy was in place. So I was ready to move on to the next step. The next step was that insert, the replacement step five. What it showed is I had to take this vibration sensor and solder to a little tab coming out the bottom to one lead. So that wasn't too tough. And then from there I needed to install it into the board at a 15 degree angle. So what I did is just soldered one side and then I could bend this however I wanted. And I bent it to close to 15 degrees and then soldered the other side. So it came out close. And then the next step, step, set, uh, step six, was a capacitor. And notice that one lead is longer than the other. Now, this is an electrolytic capacitor, so it has polarity. The longer lead has to go in the slot where there's a plus sign. That's the same thing with LEDs. LEDs have one lead longer than the other. The longer lead is the positive. So that has to go where it's marked positive. And this is where this board's a little different. There's no marking for positive. Positive is the green and white is the ground. I got it backwards on a couple of these and I had to desolder them. And you don't want to have to desolder on a single sided board. It's not nice. So I was able to correct that and then get all the LEDs in the proper position. But if you build this, make sure you double check those directions. 
So here it is all uh, put together other than the microcontroller. Now the microcontroller has a dot that marks pin 1 and a notch that marks the top of it. The notch has to line up with the notch in the socket. Once you get that lined up, it just pushes into place. And this board is basically put together pretty easy. Now the two boards go together, so I needed to break these apart. And there's a V-score down the center, which means I can just pop these apart. And then they go on top of each other like this. Now what's really interesting about these design is it's got metal standoffs and it touches these copper pads and makes a connection. So you put a screw through which touches one copper pad, then the metal uh, standoff touches the metal screw, and then that standoff touches the metal pad on the LED board, and then the screw just holds that in place. So the standoffs make the connection between the two boards. That's very clever. And then you have to tighten these up and make sure they're tight because these are actual electrical connections. But you won't get shocked by those. It's very, very low current. But it's very clever how they did that. So now let's test it out. I put in a 2032 battery into the base and you shake it and it gives you your, your number. And then it flashes. It shows that it locked in. And once it's locked in, you can reshake it. So I got a 3 the first time and then I got a 4 the second time. And then once it flashes, I can shake it again. And the third time I got, uh, what we got here is six. So now I need to make a case for this guy. So naturally I went to Tinkercad. That's where I build most of my 3D models. And what I'm actually going to do is reproduce that electronic board, the dice, as a Tinkercad model. And then what I'm going to do is turn that into a hole and I'll insert that into another block. And that way I can take the inner guts out of it. That'll perfectly match the dice. So I made a block that matched the two boards and then I brought in these cylinders and made them four millimeter hole. And this will represent the LED so it's going to take away the hole for the LED. So I put one in the center and then I proceeded to duplicate that and put them in the proper positions until I had all seven LED locations. So now this really represents what I just built that velament kit. It represents the the dice. So now I've got that and now I can bring in a block which will become the shell or the case for the LED cube or the LED dice cube. So I had to make this slightly bigger and I will end up adjusting this a couple times. That's what makes this nice. I'm not really doing parametric. I'm just kind of playing with clay, so to speak, or building with my blocks. And once I got that close to the size I wanted, I aligned it to the LED cube and the dice cube and things were looking pretty good but I wanted to make sure it was fitting properly so I reversed the order I made the the dice uh, solid and the case hollow then I could see inside of it and uh, look pretty good so far so now that I've got my block I can use a new feature that's in the new Tinkercad that I can round the corners I can put a chamfered edge on it so I did that I selected the block and rounded it until it looked good now that I noticed the LED cube was poking through at the corners so I needed to make this a little bigger now but this was looking good nice rounded edges like a dice would have so once I got that in place I noticed the bottom was now being cut off so I needed to make this thing taller and then lower this below the surface because I want to put a, a removable cover on this on the bottom of it so I resized it and made it taller and then lowered that height down two millimeters below the surface so that will become the cover, whatever is below the surface. And that was looking really good. Everything was fitting perfectly, so I made a duplicate of it. Now remember this block is two millimeters below the surface. So now if I bring in one of these hole blocks, I should be able to take the top of this off. And what will be left is just a cover that matches the bottom of the other one. So that's what I did. And I grouped these guys together, and now I have my bottom cover. But now I need an insert. I need... A block that'll hold it in place so what I did is I duplicated the dice block brought that over made it a solid chop that off at the height I wanted and now I have my cover then I took a whole block and lowered that on the original uh, three millimeters below group that together and this basically cut the bottom of the dice block so now I have my two pieces I have my top cover and then the lower shell that slides into it so this was looking really good, but now I want to make sure I got all the dimensions right. So I made, I put the two together, the top and the bottom, and then I made the 
dice block, a solid, and brought it into the shell. And I made it a yellow color so I could tell where it was hitting and where it wasn't. And so basically I'm assembling this thing right in Tinkercad by centering everything. And when I did this, I could see that I needed to raise the thing again because I made that block, that insert block on the cover too tall. So all I did was raise the upper shell and made it 35 millimeters tall, had the gaps all around that I wanted. And now this thing was ready for printing. So I made it a solid again. I slid it off the, the cover and I had my two pieces, the top and the cover. And I just selected those two and I flipped it up upside down so I could easily print it. And I, and I had to bring the cover back up above surface so it's sitting flat on the bed. And so now when it's, I have these two, I just select them and I can export just those two for STL printing, not the LED cube. So only those two selected and I was ready to send it to Simplify 3D. So I imported those two into Simplify 3D and this is actually a very easy print. Um, the cover actually ended up getting a, a little bit of a rough bottom on it, but the top came out really good. I was happy with it. I printed on my Creality CR10 at a 0.2 layer height, three top and bottom uh, shells. I did it at a 215 degrees PLA, 60 millimeters per second, and it said it would take one hour and 55 minutes and just under eight meters of plastic. And here's the result came out really nice. Now, the big question, do they fit together? <laughs> so I slid the cover over the top. Now it should because they all fit together in Tinkercad, and it did. It fit perfectly. And then the cover, which uh, I was a little, a little worried. It was a little tight. I had to just scrape off a little on the edges, but then it fit in nice and snug. And there it was, my completed dice. And when I shook it, it worked just like I wanted it to, only it looked a lot better. <laughs> So there you go, I got a three, and let's shake it again, one more time, just to make sure this thing works. Will I get a six? Yes. So there you go, completed dice project. So this was a fun project, and you can build it yourself. This kit is available for under $15. I've got links to eBay and Amazon in the description below. If you use those links, a few pennies come back to me, and you get a great deal. Also, the 3D prints are available on Thingiverse, both the top and the back. So, you can build this yourself. If you do, let me know about it in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these other videos that are popping up. And if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon really helps. And if nothing else, click on that subscribe logo and subscribe to the channel. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.